With the temperature being in the upper 30s, that makes this a dangerous situation. I cannot stay inside of this tent. I cannot get soaking wet. It's just simply too cold. Because this tent is filling with rainwater and because the condensation is so bad, I have no choice. I have to get out of this tent. Like it's funny and it's not funny. All I can imagine is someone buying this piece and then having to do this, right? My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you're all doing well. This is part three of the Legit or Shit series. And this time we have a tent from Bass Pro Shops. I am out here on this old country road looking for a campsite. Hopefully within the next 15 minutes or so, I'll find one. It's a beautiful day. It's about 57 degrees time. It's about 3 p.m. Later on tonight, we have rain coming in. Oh man. Wait until you see the tent that I have for this trip, for this adventure. <laughs> I think it's going to be a nightmare. All right, folks, mission accomplished. I have selected a campsite. A few months ago, I came out here for an ice storm adventure. Camped out over here, had a great time. For this adventure, I'm back. And let me tell you all, it is a nice day. It's too nice. I mean, it's 60 degrees here. 60 degrees. I like it and hate it all at the same time. This is the tent that I purchased from Bass Pro Shops. This is the least expensive tent that they offer. This is the hiker biker tent, one person. And this makes me question, now that I have it in hand, every life decision I've ever made. Because I'm here today with this and things are not looking good. This is one of the smallest tents as far as form factor goes that I've ever seen. You have to consider this everyone, there's a cardboard box inside of this. And yet it's still this small. Tell you what, let's go ahead and open it up and let's see what's inside of this. That's not what I expected. So it's not really a cardboard box. It's just cardboard ends. Wow. Now that I can see the full size of this tent, I am really concerned. I'm going to have to sleep inside of this tonight. Oh man. As far as the materials go, they are cheap. Do you know what I find interesting about these cheap tents? Every single one of them feels like they were made by the exact same company. It's the same materials, the same components. 
And here we have some tent poles made from fiberglass. It looks like we have two of these. No, I was incorrect, three of these. Okay, these two are the same size. And then we have a shorty. That makes no sense. <laughs> Why would they put a tensioner on a line that's four inches long? It makes no sense. As you all could see, the tent has been set up. That is the Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's Hiker Biker One Person Tent. As you all could see, this features an A-frame tunnel design. The tent has one door, and I tell you what, let's go ahead and open that up and let's get my gear in it for the night. I don't know everyone, that sure looks like a coffin to me. I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't know what to think everyone. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite this cheap before. Look at how small this tent is, everyone. I'm not even sure if I can get inside of this thing. <laughs> yeah. Comment down below right now, has anyone used this tent? If so, how on earth did you get inside of it? <laughs> Okay, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, pillow, and now the waterproof backpack. The waterproof backpack goes inside of the tent just in case I have to bail. If this begins to leak, if the condensation gets too bad, I'll pack everything up and head to the truck. That is my emergency out. I really don't wanna do this, but I will crawl inside of this. I need to figure out how to get in this tent anyways. I think if I crawl in this way, I'm not going to be able to turn around, so I need to go like, I need a reverse end of this. So, this is extremely unnatural. <laughs> okay. Whew. All right. Folks, this is one super small tent. The seams on the side are taped. It looks like the seams around the bottom are taped. The seam up here at the top is taped. But the seam at the door isn't taped. Why would they not tape that? That's crazy. I mean, they're just asking for failure. It makes no sense at all. The seams on the floor are taped. The seams at the back of the tent are not taped either. And I can see light coming through the stitches. Oh man. <sighs> Already, this tent makes no sense to me. Why tape some of the seams, but not all of them? Why not tape the most important? We have light coming through the seams back there. 
It just doesn't make any sense. I, I do not get it. I do not understand why companies do this. I can tell you one thing. I'm inside of this tent. I've been in here for about two minutes. It's got to be close to 100 degrees. Yes, the front door's open, but the wind's blowing this way. The back of the tent, there's a small vent, but it's pretty much worthless. <sighs> I want out. <laughs> After taking a close look at this tent, I have to say, again, I'm very concerned about staying the night in it. The overall design of this tent is very poor. There's very little in the way of ventilation. For some reason, not all of the seams have been taped. And something else that I'm really concerned about is the fact that there's no way to pull the body out, namely these side panels. As this tent is set up, it's going to begin to stretch. As moisture begins to fall later on tonight, it's going to stretch. That means that these panels, in other words, the walls are going to come in. This is going to be one droopy, saggy tent come the morning. The big concern here is coming into contact with condensation. This is a single wall tent with very poor ventilation, so condensation is going to be an issue. There's just no way around it. With this tent here, we have Susie to thank for it. She's the one that selected Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. So this was their cheapest tent. Now, just in case you're not familiar with the series, this is part three. In part one, we took a look at the cheapest tent from Amazon. In part two, it was Dick's Sporting Goods. In part three, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. The purpose of this series is simple. I wanna answer two important questions. Question number one, are there any good cheap tents out there? Question number two, is there a company out there who actually gives a shit about the products that they're selling? That's a big question to me. It's very important. Is it all about profits every single time or is there a company out there who actually cares? I don't know, I have no idea. With this series, we will answer these questions. Taking a look at this tent, the quality is rather poor. The design of this is bad. It has horrible reviews on their website. And that is something that impresses me. Those horrible reviews haven't been deleted for this tent. Now I have to say this, some of the reviews out there for this tent are so extremely good you have to question whether or not they're real for an example and i'll read this review to you all later there is someone who claims they went through a tornado in this tent and they stayed safe they said that hail punched a hole through the fabric but they just stitched it up and kept on going so that is quite the endorsement right there as far as the time goes it is now 4 30 it's beginning to storm alert I just got a storm alert here on my watch. There's a storm incoming. And that, of course, is later on tonight. The sun will be down at 627. I tell you what, I'm glad the temp is dropping. It's too early for it to be 60 something degrees, you know what I mean? With this jacket here that I put on, it's funny, over the years, I've gotten so many questions about this jacket. What is this? This is an old Arteryx jacket, the old convert with hood. I like this jacket quite a bit, but I refer to this as the ugly jacket. And so does my wife. It's a funky color. I'm not even sure what you would call this. It's hideous, but I like it at the same time. It's very unique. And also the cut is very unique. What do you all think about this thing? Unfortunately, this jacket was discontinued many, many years ago, but you could still find these on eBay and you could find them for a very inexpensive price. They're super comfortable. You have the hood, they fit great, and now that they're discontinued, you can find them at a good price. As soon as I noticed that the temperature was dropping, the wind direction changed. It was coming from the west, but now it's beginning to come from the southeast some. Because of that, I'm hanging out beside the truck. 
It's a fantastic wind block. Oh my God. <laughs> I totally missed. It is coffee time. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Let's see how it is. Perfect. Guatemalan coffee, that's my favorite. Anyways, when it comes to this series, a point that I want to clarify, there is another reason why I focus on cheap tints, and that's because that's what's selling. When it comes to outdoor gear, it is primarily the inexpensive stuff that sells the most. I've seen it in the comments where people say, well, what do you expect with a cheap tent? The thing is this, people go out and buy those tents because they think they're going to keep them safe. Not everyone is as experienced as we are. Not everyone is a gear geek, you know what I mean? So you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep in mind the perspective of the typical camper. These individuals are going to the store, they're looking for a cheap tent, they plan to do some camping around the house. Maybe they're interested in getting into backpacking and camping, but they don't want to spend a whole lot of money. That's why these products sell. And when a person goes to a store and they see this thing, or the tents that we've tested out, they don't think to themselves, this tent is going to leak. This tent isn't going to keep me dry. Because what sort of sense does that make? There's no reason why a company should sell a tent that leaks. It makes no sense. And that's why so many people purchase tents like this. Because they do not think there's going to be a problem. That is another reason why I'm doing this series. And again, I want to answer those two questions that I asked earlier. Can we find an inexpensive tent? And do these companies care about the products that they sell? With this Bass Pro Shops tent, I'm really confused by it, right? I mean, the company is willing to put their brand on this, their logo on this. Based upon my experiences in the outdoors with hundreds and hundreds of tents, we're going to have a miserable night. That's one reason why I'm drinking this coffee. And we'll just throw caution to the wind, right? Why not? I'm going to be up late no matter what. Since I actually have some service, let's go ahead and check it. Overall, this is not going to be a huge rain event. This isn't a big moisture maker or anything like that. And that's going to be interesting as well. Yes, I'm curious to see whether or not this tent leaks, but what about condensation? More than anything, this episode is going to prove the design of the tent matters. Having airflow matters. Having certain features matter. It's important. Tonight, rain after 2 a.m., patchy fog after 4, low around 36. Chance of rain, 80%. Precipitation amounts around a tenth of an inch. Tomorrow, rain before 11 a.m. So it's not a ton of rain, especially for this area, but it's a good amount to test this tent. I'll tell you what folks, let's take a second here and let's go over some information concerning this tent, shall we? So to start off, this tent retails for $35, but when I purchased the tent, it was on sale for $29.99. The company says it's a lightweight and protective solution for solo backpacking adventures. The single person hiker biker backpacking tent from Bass Pro Shops offers easy to use comfort on the trail. I don't know what is comfortable about this. I could barely get in it. Anyways. 
The tapered A-frame design utilizes lightweight construction made from a 68 denier 190T polyester taffeta with water repelling 1200 millimeter polyurethane coating. It's an easy to pack and effective shield from the elements. Already we know this is bullshit because these seams are not fully taped. That makes no sense. Filled with no seam mesh. What does that mean? <laughs> Lightweight shock corded fiberglass poles provide sturdy structure that sets up quick and easy. Comes with a duffel bag style carry bag. Eight tent stakes, two reflective guy out ropes. My tent did not come with two, it came with one and that's it. Where would the second one even go? There's no placement for it. They can't be talking about that down there, could they? That's like four inches long, that makes no sense. Anyways, the company claims this is six feet, 11 inches long. Let's see if that's accurate. It's close enough, I'll give them that one. Six feet, 10 inches, it's right in there. They say it's four feet wide. That is a complete lie. It might be four feet at the bottom. That makes no sense. The walls are tapered significantly. This is two feet, eight inches wide. They say it's two feet, 11 inches high at the front, two feet at the back. Really folks, it doesn't matter. It's super, super small. Again, your head doesn't come to a point. So that measurement means absolutely nothing. With the slope of the walls here, the entrance is two feet high. And of course it slopes as it goes down. Something else I see a lot of in the comment section in regards to these cheap tent videos. I see a lot of people talking about what could be done to these tents to make them better. And I don't see eye to eye with that sort of philosophy for numerous reasons, and I'll explain those. For one, you're buying a product that should do a certain job and it's not. Why would you support a company that sells garbage. Why would you support a company that's putting people's lives at risk, including your own? Yes, you could treat one of these inexpensive tents with like a water repellency. You could seam seal it, but if you're going to do that, why not just put a tarp over the top? I think it goes back to this. Why would you support that company? For myself, I'd rather spend a little bit more money than have to buy tent after tent after tent because that's what you're gonna have to do with these pieces of crap. It goes back to the saying, buy once, cry once, and I think that's a good philosophy. It's something that you need to keep in mind. You don't have to buy an expensive tent to go backpacking, to go camping. I've already reviewed a ton of inexpensive, good quality tents. And if you're interested in one of those or some of the other tents that I've tested out, check out my shelters playlist here on YouTube. In the end, everyone, I test out products based upon their own merits and what the company claims. I cannot test out a product based upon what I can do to it. I mean, it kind of goes back to like, I could put a tarp over it and all of a sudden it's waterproof. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm not going to do that. You shouldn't have to do it either. But for me, that seems wrong. It doesn't seem like the right thing to do, especially when you can go out and find inexpensive, good quality tents.
everyone, this smells so incredibly good. And good news, it's ready. What I have here is chicken sausage made with Italian seasoning and feta cheese. I have some gnocchi along with some kale cheddar cheese sauce. Oh my gosh, it looks incredible. It smells even better. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I was able to get this done before it was completely dark out, so I'm going to hurry up, eat, and I'll see you all inside of the tent soon. How do you get inside of this tent? Everyone, <laughs> this is awful. This tent is just terrible. It amazes me that they sell this for adults. I mean, it's just so small. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Welcome to my nightmare, everyone. <sighs> I am settled, kind of. I'm not inside of my sleeping bag yet, but I'll get there eventually, I think. What's crazy to me is that like outside, it's about 42 degrees. Inside of this, I mean, it's very, very warm. So warm, in fact, I gotta take all of this stuff off. It's gotta be, I don't know, 60 something degrees in here. I mean, warm enough for me to wanna take off my sweater. That's concerning. Cold air outside, warm air inside, one wall. That's a recipe for condensation right there. As is, there's no way for me to lay inside of this without my body touching the walls. I mean, look at this. They're already coming in, and every time I move, <laughs> I touch a wall. This, my friends, is going to be very, very interesting. It is 7.40 p.m. And I have to admit, I am frustrated. To me, this design is irritating because somebody should have tested this out. They should have put a full-size adult inside of this thing because this does not make any sense. The average human being adult cannot fit inside of this without having a ton of problems. Just going to turn the camera off, chill inside, and let's just see what happens. The rain's not supposed to come in for a long time, so I'm just going to relax as much as possible. I will see you all in a bit. I'll bring you back in a few hours to update you. Alright folks, it's update time, an hour has passed since it began raining, but the tent in here is now absolutely soaking wet. There's so much condensation inside of this, it's crazy. Also, the tent has begun leaking. Down at my feet here, there is a pool of water. Now, the unfortunate thing is is that I cannot get up at the moment and show you the water. Because if I move at all, I'm going to be completely soaked myself. All I have to do is just touch the walls, which are beginning to sag in, and I would be in big trouble. I'm not sure if you all can see this, but I mean, the walls are just soaking wet. Just soaking wet, everyone. I just got done looking at the radar, and it does not show much rain coming in. It's kind of funny. Already, I know for a fact that this tent is a big piece of crap. You shouldn't buy it. This is, seriously, the worst tent I've used possibly ever. The quality of this is bad. The size is terrible. Condensation, atrocious. Airflow, terrible. It's not waterproof. It really is the worst tent ever. I am going to bail from this tent. The simple fact is this, because it continues to rain, the tent is leaking, 
And also the condensation is so bad, my sleeping bag is beginning to get soaked. My clothing is beginning to get soaked. I have no choice. I have to get out of this tent. With the temperature being in the upper 30s, that makes this a dangerous situation. I cannot stay inside of this tent. I cannot get soaking wet. It's just simply too cold. This is something that we'll have to talk about in the morning, but like this is a dangerous product. These companies who are selling these big pieces of shit, they're selling dangerous products to people. Bass Pro Shops calls this the hiker biker backpacking tent. Take this out and die. It's just ridiculous. But I'll try to show you all just how wet it is in here. And I'll try to show you all the leaking down at the bottom. But yeah, I've got to get out of here. If it was windy, this would be raining down on top of me. This tent is so small, I can't break down my gear and pack it up. <sighs> Isn't that funny? Already this gear is wet, so I'm just going to leave it inside of this tent. It is what it is. I'm going to escape to the truck, fire up my buddy heater, and just warm up. It's the only choice that I have. Oh man, this is awful. I have no clue how to get out of this tent. <laughs> like it's funny and it's not funny. All I can imagine is someone buying this piece of shit and then having to do this, right? It is now 4.22 in the morning. I'm in the back of the truck. Being inside of that tent, that was the worst. Like the absolute worst. With my channel here, what I do is I try to help you, the consumer. I want to prevent people from getting hurt. Cheers, my friends, cheers. As far as the time goes, it is now 5.25 in the morning. Made some coffee, I have the heater going. Life is pretty good. It is so much better in here than inside of that tent. <laughs> cheers to that. I tell you what, while we're in here, Let's go over some of the reviews that I found for that tent. It needs to be mentioned that there are numerous versions of this tent. Some that are available, some that have been like discontinued, some that go by different names. I'm not sure like what the differences are between them all. They all look exactly the same though. The first one says, this is a warm and cozy tent and it's good for hunting or hiding. Hiding, <laughs> five stars. I wonder what they're hiding from. Where are they hiding at? Eh, whatever. Review number two says, I guess this is okay if you are camping under a shelter. It leaks. If you like being wet, this is the tent for you. One star. As I mentioned, there's other versions of this tent out there. So I found one that had 13 reviews. Overall, two and a half stars out of five. Poor, poor, poor. I bought this, got it home, has no English instructions, no guy ropes. I wish I had not purchased this product, two stars. Just use this for a one night hike and camp 
in the Pawnee National Forest. The tent material does not breathe, and there's no way to vent it properly. Slept all night, the door flaps open, woke up with saturated walls inside. The ground sheet was soaked under the tent as if it had rained all night, but not a single drop of water fell. I will be taking this back to Cabela's tomorrow. This is my favorite review. I've been biking cross country for two weeks now, and this is my only shelter. It's still standing. Tornadoes and thunderstorms through Kansas. Floods through Missouri. Hailstorm in Colorado. It's the camper with grit. It's not the tent. Yeah, I got a little wet and a couple holes from the hail. My tent poles washed away before I could save them. <laughs> That's my fault. I still use it by stringing it up. Four stars for keeping up with me. Yeah, okay. Complete nonsense. I'm a 17-year-old cross-country runner, and I bought it a year ago. I've had no problems. Yes, it's small, but that's the point, people. If you expected something bigger, then maybe read the dimensions. The dimensions are bullshit, though. <laughs> They're lies. It was so fun using this at running camp, and it was easy to set up. I say all the complaints about this are people who didn't read. It's definitely sweet, and cross-country girls checking me out with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> if there's one thing that girls like, it's really small shitty tents, I tell you that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh, it's too early to be talking about this crap. <laughs> okay, well, the sun will be up in about an hour. At that point in time, we'll get up, we'll empty out the tent, we'll take a close look at it, and then wrap this up. I am done. I've had a lot of fun with the previous trips, but this one here has been miserable. Just being inside of that small tent, like how hot it's been, the humidity inside of it, the condensation, the leaking, everything about that tent is frustrating. So <laughs> I'm ready for this adventure to be over. I think all in all, I slept maybe an hour, something like that. It's that time, everyone. We need to check on this tent. Break it down and then go home. <laughs> it's soaking wet. Oh, man. The first thing you'll notice here is that the floor is covered in moisture. All of this is condensation. I'm not sure how well you see this, but the walls are covered in water. And this over here is what I want you all to focus on. Look at that puddle of water. You can actually see that it's coming from the corner over here. What I find so amusing about this is that overall we've had maybe 45 minutes of very light rain and we have that much water inside of this tent. If someone from Bass Pro Shops happens to watch this episode, I'm curious, why would the company put their logo on this? Why is this product so good that it represents their company? I'm just confused and shocked, to be honest. Obviously, someone at Bass Pro Shops signed off on this, and they're like, okay, let's put our name, let's put our brand on this. This is good enough to represent the company. I don't get it. Not at all. After spending most of the night in this tent, I have to say this is probably one of the worst tents I've ever seen. Like seriously, it's, it's really that bad. I personally would not purchase this tent or any other product that comes from Bass Pro Shops. I would not support this company. They're selling flat out garbage. They call this the hiker, biker, backpacking tent. They want their customers to purchase this and then to take it backpacking. They talk about this protecting you from the elements all of that is complete rubbish. I personally cannot support a company that would do this to their customers. It's not right. They should call this the Bass Pro Shops Coffin. <laughs> because that's what it is. This thing is a coffin. I tell you what, I can't even imagine what it would be like if it really rained last night. Again, 45 minutes, light rain. We have that much water down here. There's moisture everywhere. By the way, I can confirm that the moisture at the bottom is from leaking. That's not condensation. I was able to crawl out and crawl back in and look down here. And that mesh vent was actually wet from water drops falling from the seam here. So while this tent does have a huge condensation problem, it also leaks.
while the truck is warming up, I want to point out that it did not rain hard enough to even form a puddle here on the ground. Not a single puddle, my friends. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Well, my friends, I want to thank you very much for joining me for this episode of Legit or Shit. In this case, the tent was a pile of crap. To be honest, I'm a little bit surprised that it leaked, considering the fact that it has Bass Pro Shops on the side of it. I don't know much about Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's because there isn't one even remotely close to where I live. In fact, I may have gone to one like one time in my entire life. Make sure to share your thoughts down below. What do you all think about Bass Pro Shops? What do you all think about that tent? That awful tent. <laughs> While I had fun on this adventure, the experience inside of that tent was terrible. I'm done, I'm going home, I'm going to get some sleep. Everyone, take care, be well, I'll see you around soon. Thank you.